Hey, 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 welcome back to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. We are in our new studio. Again, I am Cynthia Conte and my twin. Twinning, <laughs> twinning, twinning, twinning. I'm Giandra LaBeouf, of course. This was supposed to be a Cynthia Conte tribute outfit <laughs> because I know she likes to wear this and then now we looking like the twinsies, looking we, like some bookends. Well, as always, but you know what? We share a brain, so share it's brain. totally fine. And we had, we don't, we do not plan this, guys, so... You know, don't think, oh my God, they're going to come matchy matchy. But we really don't. We don't. We look like some fine ass bookends. Woo! Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, real fast, because we have a great guest on um, on Zoom right now. He's coming in from London, but we got to just talk about something real fast. Let's do it. Ryan Garcia. Yes, indeed. He had a really terrific knockout. A knockout win. He was going to the body. He looked good. No matter mm -hmm. what you think about him, it was a spectacular win, and it was exactly what he needed to do to get to that next level. And the the maturity is happening, and it's going to be amazing to see where the journey goes. I do see the uh, the differences after uh, working with Joe Goosen. Even mm -hmm. after his last fight, you can really see, we've talked about it, his patience. Um, he's been sitting a little bit more in his shots, and I remember reading and seeing uh, that he does sit on his back foot a little bit more, maybe mm -hmm. to, to set up the back... Uh, the hook but I go with time he'll be able to uh, he'll work on that because he's doing incredibly well uh, we saw that fight hype put out the video of um, tank should be the a side and it should be at 135 pounds Garcia <laughs> said moving up to 140 they're big boys I mean Ryan is a growing boy tank has fought at 140 what do you think at 135 and tank being the a side it makes me think of when Floyd fought Canelo. Yes. And he had Canelo come down and wait to fight him. But hey, when you're in the A-side, those are the things you get to negotiate. And if he wants to fight, you know, that's a point of uh, negotiation. Well, Floyd made it a point to Oscar. said, well, you, I, I fought at your weight. I came down two sides. And I fought at, um, I'm naturally 130. So Floyd makes some points. But you know what? Floyd always says, we ain't stupid. We don't say no, no to money. <laughs> no, hello. Me neither. Me neither. All right. Well, that was a quick wrap up because we had, um, you know, as we, as you know, we are in our new studio. We are here, uh, Best Women's Boxing Show. Period. And first time joining us, we're very excited. Okay, let me get this right. Break it down. Ziad Al Mayouf. Am I right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> What's up, guys? High five. I did it. I, I'm like, hello. I'm hanging. <laughs> also known as uh, Zizo. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Zizo. I'm two for two. You go in, you go in. Because Zizo, where does Zizo come from? Who's called? Did your mom call you Zizo first? Who was calling you Zizo? Where did it come from? <laughs> I mean, um, back home, wh whoever has a Z in his name is just nicknamed <laughs> Zizo, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> 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 so I, I really wanted, I wish I had a cool story, but that's it. <laughs> oh, I mean, have you thought about maybe changing your name? Well, you know what? You can't give your own boxing name. That's right. Uh, has Buddy McGirt ever thought, you know, you don't look like a Zizo. You look like a killer. Yeah. Well, Buddy's <laughs> name is Buddy. Yeah. It's Aww. James Buddy McGirt. <laughs> that so doesn't sweet. sound like killer to me, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's true. Nah, Buddy, Buddy's a character actually. Um. Uh, so the way you pronounce it is Zizo, but when I first met Buddy, he just changed it to Zizzo, and he's refused <laughs> to go back since. And I, I swear, and then I go into the gym, and Buddy's always shouting. If you know Buddy, you know he's, he's pretty loud. <laughs> so he's always shouting, Zizzo, Wizzo, Skizzo, Wizzo, everything. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Does so, he sing the song, the double Dutch bus to you? Does he come in and go, sizzle, fizzle, zizzle, zizzle, zizzle. <laughs> See, now you got to walk out to that. Oh, my God. You know, do you know that song? No, but oh, I we're don't We're going to send it to Rachel. She'll probably laugh. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what? Why not? Do you go by Zizzo or Zayad? Ziad. Zayad. I, I go by Ziad. Zizzo. 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 See, I'm, I'm already screwing up and I just said it. Uh, okay, so you have a very interesting story. Uh, you were born in New York. And then raised mm -hmm. in Egypt, and in yeah. Egypt, obviously, we we know on that side of the world, boxing was is not prevalent. It still is not that prevalent. And for you to become a boxer, you started doing tennis, but you watched them train inside a a, a human built ring. Am I correct? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's so bananas. There was, there was no ring. Yeah, there was no ring. It's just a coach and his mitts. <laughs> oh, so what what is it about boxing that that drew you to it? So um, it's just the intensity that was in the coach's voice and the focus that I'd see um, the fighters giving to the coach. It was just too much to not 
you know, no catch my attention. We'd be warming up for our tennis practice and right across the track would be the coach, the boxing coach and the fighters and stuff. They were just all so loud and everyone is fast and disciplined and focused. So uh, it, like naturally you, you just look there, you know, and once I looked there, I never looked back. Wow. That's usually, amazing. Right? Usually when it's like there's a lot of running, I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, tennis probably prepared you very well for that because it takes a certain degree of hand-eye coordination to be an accomplished tennis player, a skill you can bring over to boxing. So do you think those skills early on playing tennis are helping you in boxing or how would you compare the skills needed in both sports? So definitely the footwork and the is is something more than the hand-eye coordination actually because you always have to be running back and forth side to side pretty quick you know and there is kind of no anticipation you have to see it and do it real fast so that's one thing and another i think is the independence once you're on the court you're not allowed to communicate with your coach and your coach isn't allowed to communicate with you, mm -hmm. which is not like boxing at all, but it gives you that sense of, you know, um, self, self reliability. You got to rely on yourself. You got to be independent sometimes and you have to be disciplined by yourself. If your coach is there or if your coach is watching or not, you have to be 100% regardless. How was that adjustment for you? Because uh, with being a tennis player is, is a degree of independence. So you, like the coach can't talk to you. And so making that shift to where the coach is in your ear almost every second, except when you're in combat, was it a, an adjustment for you? Did you like it better? How did you? No, what did of you course, think I liked it better. So I liked it better when the coach is always in my ear. You know, that's 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 how I like the communication to be, especially when you got a coach like Buddy McGirt in your ear. <laughs> I mean, you can't say no to that. So that's uh, that's like me living my dreams and I'm living so many people's dreams that are back from where I'm from. That's well, you know, since you uh, since you started boxing, the one person that you really did study, obviously, was Buddy McGirt and his jab. And now look at fast forward. It's almost like you put it out in the in the boxing universe. The boxing gods answered you and you trained. I mean, obviously, you moved to L.A. because you had to prove to your parents and your father that uh, th that you're very serious about this. How did that conversation with you and Buddy? Did you say, can you can you uh, train me or did he look at you and say, I want to train you? Going back to the whole Buddy McGirt and me studying him and his jab to begin with, I, I actually told Buddy when I first met him because I couldn't believe that he was in front of me, you know. And so may, maybe people are used to this in the U.S. where you see such a big coach, such big fighters trained by side by side, all that. That's because you're used to seeing them like growing up or you're used to, you know, they're from where you're from. But for me, it was very different. That wasn't the case at all. So I had Buddy mentioned on my Instagram stories, like the archives from 2019. <laughs> and I haven't mentioned my story, me sitting in my dorm room, studying his jab over and over again. And I keep like captioning my stories, best jab in the game, best jab in the game. And then fast forward a year or two after that, two years after that, he's my coach. So the way it went was um, basically I, I just thought that I'm going to miss 100% of the chance if I don't take it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had I have a very big opportunity for me. I feel like God put me in that position for a reason where Buddy McGirt is right in front of me. So why wouldn't I go and ask him to coach me? And I'm the, so I'm the one that went and asked Buddy if he could train me. Of course, Buddy would always like, uh, realize me in the gym. He'd always give me advice, tell me what to do, tell me what not to do. Sometimes he'd compliment my jab even, which would be, <laughs> you know, unreal. But eventually with the help of actually some fighters in the gym, I just told them, how do I even start that conversation with a coach like that for him to help me out? And at that time, I was Olympic bound, but before they canceled the qualifications and all that, and I didn't have uh, any pro plans yet. Mm -hmm. So would Buddy take a fighter who is from scratch, zero, 
and prepare him for his pro career. Like you just said, because of COVID, you know how many uh, p- prospects or uh, they didn't ever even think about going pro, but they had to because you can't wait out two years, any Olympic hopefuls. Uh, but when you said when he looks at your jab, does he say, man, it does look like my jab? Yeah. Does he say that? <laughs> Or not yet. I wish. <laughs> I, I, w- I wish that because I'd be doing something wrong if, if that's not what he's thinking. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's fast forward now that you have gone, well, you have you were supposed to go pro uh, like a couple months ago. And I remember Jander and I were reading it on Twitter that there was a guy that um, he, I guess you guys both made weight. And then after weight, this your opponent decided to take an edible. I don't know where... <laughs> why he thought that was le- like legal? Did why? What was the explanation of why he took an edible? Did you after? intimidate him so much that he had to get high? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did to him. <laughs> I intimidated <laughs> him so much he had to get high. But no, when he he actually came and spoke to me after, so it was the day of the fight. We weighed in. He, he took an edible the night of the weigh-ins and then the day of the fight, he went and declared it himself. So it's not like his test came back positive. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you know but, what I mean? but why did, did he say why he <laughs> took it at night? Is it maybe because he, he was in pain? Could he not sleep? Was that his CBD? I, I don't was know. He, was he hungry? Was he hungry? He, he, me, <laughs> he came and he told me, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what's right, what's wrong. Nobody ever told me that I can't do this. I'm like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's a, a drug. Fight. About it. You know what I mean? So that what, is so bizarre. It every single fight? That is so bizarre. Did he, did, did he say that, that he does it every single fight? No, no, he didn't. But he told me that he didn't know that it was wrong. He said nobody ever told him that that's wrong. That's almost like so, su- saying someone I injected steroids. I didn't know it was wrong. I didn't you know. know. <laughs> Everyone else yeah. is doing Everyone it. else does it. That, so, yeah, but that's one thing. And him declaring it himself is another. So when you're taking the drug test, the commissioner <laughs> asks you. <laughs> the commissioner <laughs> asks you. Did you take anything that could affect the result of your test? And I said, yeah, I took creatine supplement, you know, my pre-workout. Right. And he said, okay. And then the other guy said, I took edibles. <laughs> and, and I'm like, no, no, that's not what he means. <laughs> oh, I wish I would have been a fly on that He was probably thinking I took a sleeping pill. But uh, uh, I would have at least waited until the drug test came back. Like, what? What? How did that they get in my? They made me some dinner. I didn't know. Did it come in my dinner. steak or chicken? Okay. Was it in my beef? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in my, my God. Well, you know what? This It was such a funny story. I mean, sad to yeah, say, because now you're going to be making your pro debut. The universe had yeah. a bigger plan. The boxing gods had a different plan for you. And now you're going to be making your pro debut in Jeddah on the undercard of Usyk versus wow. Joshua 2. And uh, this is a really big deal for me because for you, especially because it's in Saudi Arabia, they're trying to bring boxing, especially women's boxing, as you know, because we are a, a, box, a women's show. For you, do you find this to be heavy on your shoulders? Is this, a, is this kind of stressful for you going into this kind of a fight? So I find this to be extremely heavy on my shoulders. But I like to put myself in that position. You know what I mean? I like that feeling because the more the, the pressure is on me, the, the heavier the weight on my shoulders, the more that I have to, like the more that I have no choice but to do good. Mm-hmm. I have no choice but to perform. So when the pressure is on and the weight's on my shoulders, my back's against the wall. And I like that feeling because when my back's against the wall, I can't go back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the only way is forward. And that's that. I, so that's what I like to do. I like to think that I have such big weight on my shoulders, and I've been thinking that before they even heard of me back home. As much as they know me now, I've been always living like that, going to the gym like that, living outside of the gym like that. Everything I'm thinking this all the time because this is what's going to me make this is what's going to make me show up every day, give 100% every day, and perform every day. I like that feeling. I love the feeling of carrying that weight on my shoulders. So does that give us some insight into what your fighting style is? Are you not a fighter that fights off of the back foot? Are you a bully? Are you a come forward fighter, aggressive fighter? How would you describe your style since you favor that not being able to go backwards in your life? So 
I I would I would I would just say I'm a boxer. Honestly, I'm, I'm a boxer. I always fight behind my jab. You know, if if my jab is working really well, I, I'm gonna win the whole fight with my jab. You know what I mean? I I can go a whole fight without having to let the hand the right hand go, because that's how good I believe my jab is. Um, so you could say I'm a dancer. That's how it is. I just dance around. I use my jab, but once I see you, you know. Once I have you, your mind, you know, then I'm going to start bullying you. I'm going to start putting that pressure and breaking you down until you don't want it anymore. Oh, I'm excited to watch him fight. Mm -hmm. Me too. Is it, is, <laughs> so whose jab do you like? As If we step aside from your fight real quick, since you enjoy the jab and fundamentals of boxing, what other active fighters do you have you seen and you enjoy their jab just watching as a fan? Who do you enjoy? Devin Haney. I mean, yeah. Devin Haney and his jab, I think they go hand in hand, you know, it's the same name. <laughs> he, he has to put it in his name. I really like Devin Haney's jab and I like how it comes from different levels and different even sides, you know what I mean? Sometimes he lunges with it, sometimes he throws it going backwards, sideways, throws it from his chin, from down to his chest. You know, he's always using his jab, doubling it and tripling it. So I would say Devin Haney actually is the only person who I enjoy their jab. That's true because, I mean, we saw what he did with Cambosos. Boxed and his head off with the jab. Yeah, with the jab. He didn't have to go into a brawl, which Cambosos wanted, but he exactly what he did mm -hmm. with the jab. When we talked to Rachel, your PR, uh, Pitch Inc., uh, she, you know, she was saying that this was a very, very hard fight to get because, you know, obviously you're going to be almost like the poster child for boxing. Uh, there's not many that will say I'm from that, that region. You're familiar with it, but you had to come to America to uh, hone in on your skills. So I just want to mention um, the people that, uh, since you are going to be, the Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia government and Boxing Federation are supportive of your career, specifically His Royal Highness Prince Khaled Al Saud, Prince Abdul... Abdulaziz Al Saud, Rasha Al Hamiz, His Royal Highness King Salman, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, and the Boxing Arabia. Wow. Please forgive me if I have mispronounced. That was, that was pretty I, good, though. That was pretty good. Sir. Please, whoever's watching, I apologize. No, um, that was that was good. That was that was straight on. But yeah, you you got a spot on the Saudi Arabian government. All of it is behind me, and as you said specifically. King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, I mean, they just support the youth and they're empowering that 2030 vision of Saudi Arabia. And that's the that's the goal. And that's that's part of the weight I'm carrying on my shoulders. You know, Prince Abdulaziz and Prince Khaled, same thing. They are just pushing to have the athletes always on the biggest stages and biggest events, as well as you know, Russia, she's the vice president of the Federation, Russia al Khamis, and she's believed in me since day one. I can never, you know, like thank her enough. But all of this is weight that I love, you know, to be even dealing with with people like that, to be dealing with royalty is crazy for me. You know, uh, it just shows that you always have to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. You always have to stay on track. You know, run it, walk it or crawl it. Just don't stop. You know, you have to keep going. You have to keep putting your name out there. Use everything you can. Control everything you can. Use your social media. Send out these messages. Send out the emails. Even if they won't respond, just do it. Just send them out. And the one person who will respond will be the person who understands the game the most, the situation the most, because they know this is a fighter with a personality this is an athlete with a personality who's taking risks who's ready to risk it all you know uh, you mentioned that um the changes for boxing what do you want to see the changes in saudi arabia when it comes to boxing so the changes that i want to see i'm actually starting to see happen already under the you know the reforming of the boxing federation I'm starting to see a national team, an amateur national team, and they're competing internationally now. This is the first year where they compete internationally. 
a full national team. Is this men? men? Is this men and, and women? women? Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's both men and women because the as I said, the vice president of the federation, Russia, she's a woman. And she's been breaking grounds ever since and even before she took on that position. She's just she's just been pushing for women to take a bigger role and we can have women who fight. They've been traveling and joining camps in Ireland and Kuwait and and Kazakhstan, you know, they've been traveling everywhere and she's been building that experience for them pretty quick you know they're really heavily investing in it so i'm starting to see the changes that i really wanted to see happen before in terms of women being more involved women taking a stand women being interviewed and being posted on social media that's what we need right now because we need that inspiration and now that we see a full men's national team as well it just shows you that okay they're actually paying attention to the fighters who are in saudi arabia too so these are all changes that are starting to happen and slowly but surely then we're going to have pro fighters but for now <laughs> you're looking at the only one that's, great. that's somebody somebody has to blaze yeah, the trail and it's going to be you it's, yeah when you get uh when you have the opportunity to travel over uh, for the fight when you get ready to go over for the debut will you have an opportunity to visit the place where it started will that or will it be too emotional do you want to go after the fight maybe is it will it be meaningful for you to travel back there definitely definitely after the fight of course because i need to control as many of the emotions as i could before the fight so after the fight you know after i get that win god willing this is what this is what i'll do go home and uh, reconnect reconnect with my family reconnect with my culture and everything this is something that i believe not only I should be doing every once in a while. Everyone should be doing that every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, you have to go back to your roots. You have to connect with your family, reconnect with your culture and your upbring upbringing, your traditions. It it's what makes us us, you know, it's what, it's what makes us different. And it's what makes us human before athletes, before exactly. fighters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. People forget about that. Exactly. The human touch. They're all about just competition, competition, but there's still a human aspect behind behind all of that. I just came back from New Orleans. It was great. <laughs> back to the motherland. Back to my back to my yeah, roots yeah. too. Yeah, to, you have to do that. Yeah, certainly. You know, your sense of mission and your sense of and your goals and your drive is very, very strong. But being away from your family and your culture and all the things that are familiar to you, do you get lonely? How do you sort of? handle that when you feeling like you want to see your family or eat something good or just having those those memories how do you kind of compartmentalize that in your head to keep yourself going because it would be very easy to just say you know what this is too hard i'm isolated i i just want to go back so i'll i'll tell you something honestly i've been in the u.s now for three years um going on to my fourth year and the first year and a half that was very difficult it was very difficult to not have that feeling of you know being away from my family being away from my country my culture and the same traditions all that it was very hard because boxing wasn't going so well for me when i first came to the u.s it was like i started over the level is completely different the fighters are completely different you see i mean i've never hit the speed bag before i came to the us you know i've never hit the double end bag before i came to the us so it was stuff like that the fighters just know we're on an, a whole other level so i went in and it was a whole year and a half where i would go into sparring and get my behind handed to me <laughs> every single session for a year and a half wow. but i just kept going because I knew that eventually if you outwork them you're going to reach their level but that's the key word here I had to outwork people just to reach the level they're at I didn't I like it, I wasn't at the stage yet where I could surpass them hmm. I had to outwork people you know twice and even three times as they worked only to be at the same level and that was mentally very 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 hard physically it could be done but mentally being away from your family being away from support especially having such a big time difference so when you need them at night 
they're not awake yet. And when you need them during the day, they're still not awake yet, you know? Yeah. So you only have them for a few hours in the day before they're asleep. And by the time they're awake, you're asleep. So it's, it's stuff like that. However, that feeling never went away. But once I started getting my, my stuff together, once I started getting my boxing together and have a solid team behind me and like, like Buddy McGirt and Rachel and everything, and my work started to show result. And that's when that feeling of being away from my family, away from my country, all of that started becoming motivation, mm. started becoming a push. So I, I keep that thought, I keep that fe- those emotions and feelings because whenever I, you know, I feel, I feel what I feel, I use it as motivation. I know I've sacrificed more than many, many, many fighters around me here because those who grew up with their dads in their corners or their family behind them or, you know, let alone just the equipment or a ring for the first few years they started fighting, you know, I just use all of that as motivation. And there's so much history to be written in the sport for the Arab world, for Saudi Arabia, for Egypt, for all of the Arab countries. So it's a good thought to have behind my head that I'm carrying such heavy load while going through all of that. Isn't that crazy when he just said that there's history still need to be made? He, he's writing it right now right in now. 2022. That's I can't incredible. even imagine like our, our, you know, our kids' kids are going to be like, oh, I remember my mom and my grandma worked this. Like, that's incredible. <laughs> exactly. We're much older than you, dear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my kids probably practically age. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but that's amazing. That's really history in real yeah. Time. It really there's a there's a quote that I want to read that you said in an interview. They are groomed, they as in US, they are groomed for this their entire life in the US, the fighters. But in the Arab world, nobody thinks that this is even a possibility. Wow. That is so powerful because people there that are, are craving to not just boxing, but any other sport that's not that's not even existent there. They didn't even, they can't even, uh, it's not, they can't even think it into existence. Exactly. And boxing is like right, right there. It's just getting to the beginning and you fighting on a massive undercard. I mean, everyone is going to tune into this massive, um, this massive fight. For sure. And uh, especially for you being on this as your pro debut coming from uh, Uh, Egypt. There you go. You're like a humanitarian to me. I feel like that's a you, that's your you know that's your journey in boxing. It's not to make a lot of money, of course it is, but you know it's also he's going to be kind of like a Ramla Ali. He's going to yeah. put boxing on the map for their country and just the children yeah. and all those kids who are doing something at that same yeah. sports complex. And I read an yeah. article about you too, where you said there's no boxing gym. It's like a sports center and mm-hmm. all the sports are happening there. But there's probably some little boy or little girl just like you who's going to watch this and go, Yeah, I don't want to play tennis, mom. Yeah. I want to box. <laughs> I want to fight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I want to kind of go back. So as you know, we are called the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. And we ask every male and female, especially males, are you a fan of women's boxing? Of course, I'm a fan of women's boxing. And, you know, this. I like that <laughs> this show is called the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. Period. Yeah. Because period. I was going, I was going, I, I was going going to say why do you have women in there it's the best boxing show period but no you gotta have it in there to show people who's running it you know yep. but, um, we're audacious that way for you but i'll let you i'll tell you something this is i i always like you know groundbreaking stories i like when people you know show their personalities and stand their ground out outside of the fight game more than even inside of the fight game and i feel like this is what women go through a lot if it's in sports or if it's in jobs and everything they you guys you know have to stand your ground in your job and outside your job dealing with so much so i'm a fan of of course women's boxing and i support it and i hope to see the arab world support it more and more as we go on and i really hope to be a stepping stone for all the women who want to fight and for anyone who wants to fight on my side of the world, you know, mm-hmm. but this is this is the dream. And I feel like I'm living my dream right now. 
And speaking of, I was when when you guys were talking about um, that there's a kid somewhere probably watching this that's going to be like, I want to box. I don't want to do tennis anymore. I was just talking to Rachel yesterday, like two nights ago, because I announced the fight then. And I texted her. I was like, I feel like a superhero. Aww, I, like, and, and as you I should. Told her, I, yeah, I told her I actually feel like an actual superhero, like a superman or something, you know, because right now I just feel like everyone's hopes are thrown at me. Everyone's, you know, the eyes are all on me right now. Because you, you were once that kid. That's incredible. Exactly, You're exactly. And I feel like now people are going to be watching me to follow into my footsteps and that's how that's how i want to live you know if anything is going to break me i want that to break me if anything's going to take me to my success i want that to take me to my success i just love it all you know i'm happy to be doing it all can i can i ask you to go back a little bit we have a lot of entitlement in this country because we literally have everything at our fingertips any sport anything you want to do it's available to you we don't have to go somewhere else to accomplish it but if for the people who are going to be meeting you for the first time watching this interview can you please share what those early days of learning to box, where you were boxing, what your ring looked like. We read your story and we know what it looked like. Can you describe what that was for you when you began at the sports center with the ring? People are gonna trip when you say what the ring, even the ring you were boxing in looked like. Can you talk <laughs> about that? So the ring, actually we, we first had just, we didn't have mats on the ring, it was wood. Okay, and then that started becoming way too hard to just move around the ring. To begin with, just to be very clear, for if I've been boxing for 12 years now, for the first five years, I didn't have a ring. We didn't have a single ring in, the, in that sport complex, you know what I mean? So it was all the coach, his mitts. When we wanted to spar, we'd spar and we'd put the rest of the team around to create a ring. And sometimes when we spar at night, there isn't enough light, you know, it's not enough light to spar, but we used to do it anyways. Uh, when we got the ring, we struggled really to get the ring, especially financially. And then they put the mats on the ring and the mats kept tearing apart and stuff. And they didn't like the sport complex itself, didn't want to pay for new mats. So we went to the next door, you know, just lifting gym and we got the you know, the, the very hard mats that they have at the gym for the weights, yeah. mm -hmm. for the right, you know, where you drop the weights and stuff, they are super heavy. They're not made for, you know, <laughs> moving on and jumping on, but we took them and we placed them on the ring and we found out that it doesn't fit. You know, it's, we have too little. So the ring literally was just one block, then there's nothing, then a block then there's nothing then another block and then there's nothing That's so it, crazy. it's not even it's not a flat ground there are so many videos and pictures of it you know um but yeah it's, it wasn't a flat ground twisted ankles here and there were normal you know falling falling without being hit was normal all that stuff was normal so but we we had to make the best of what we had and we had to prove not only to the sport complex but to the to the city we were in that we could win medals we could win championships mm -hmm. and that was the goal of the team back home and my coach back home his goal was always to get their approval by getting the results we had to win more and more at the state and nationals so they would agree to pay for a ring or get us just ring mats new new ropes i i had a partial disc in my back because of how the how loose the ropes were wow so yeah <laughs> crazy. so i just I, I, w I went back i was slipping a punch and i went back and i never came forward <laughs> you know oh, wow. there, there is no there is no Tension. elasticity yeah you know? yeah so it, it's stuff like that but we really had, had to work for everything we uh, we got and that that's that's just you no know, we had it easier than even many, many, many people back home. We had it easier. Like wow. we actually had a ring. We had a few mats. Some people don't have anything. 
So that's amazing. You have dirt and sand. That's what people that's do it. it on. And the homies to stand yeah. around to just make the, yeah. the <laughs> shape of the ring. And that's it. Shove you yeah. back in when because the, there's no rope. <laughs> so well, it was it was it was uh, it was tough, but it's what I I feel like it's what built me to to still be here. Wow. Uh, despite all the downhills and the you know the struggles. It's nothing compared to to what I saw back home. I'm used to it, you know. But like I said, the biggest motivation is the amount of history to be written in the sport for my people, for Saudi Arabia. To be a superhero for the Arab world and Saudi Arabia is just a pleasure and an honor for me. And I love every second of it. I'm really living my dreams. I I just. I'm, look, I don't want to go t- too deep into it. You can cry. It's really, okay. You can cry. We've I'm had criers. We've had people crying. It's <laughs> no, amazing. No, no. Not, this not, is right, a now, safe, not right now. This is a safe space. It, that regional world, it's incredible. I look at, I'm a big fan of WWE, and I know they've started doing the, the Crown Jewel event there in Jeddah. And then, so now, as you make your ascension in boxing, they always pull boxers like they did with Tyson Fury and Floyd and all those people. So now... When you go home, you have to participate with WWE My goodness. and bring further visibility to the region and do like the when they put an amateur in the match. That could be really, really cool. I can totally see Buddy McGirt going in for a slam. I would love that so much. <laughs> do you know how much I would love seeing Buddy come up off the top rope or something like that? We're interviewing Buddy after this, so we're going to float this idea. To- <laughs> yeah, let me write that down. WWE. Oh, oh my honestly, God. Honestly, I, that, that's the plan, you know. Um, I'm I'm really coming for it all. I want to represent. Uh, at this point, I'd be representing boxing. I want to represent boxing in every way possible. I want to represent my side of the world and my country in every way possible. If it's uh, if it's in boxing and fighting, if it's being the right and disciplined and honorable athlete outside of the ring too, and the most important thing is to show people that we are human before we are athletes. The way we treat people. The way we deal with our issues and the way we deal with our problems, that's what really shows what type of athlete you are. The way, what type of human you are is what type of athlete you're going to be. Mm. So you really have to live your, right, your life right to be the right athlete. You know, uh, just treat people the way you want to treat, you want to be treated. For example, when my opponent came to me, the one who took an edible before my pro so debut. I, mean, <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even say it anymore, but <laughs> but he came, when he came, everyone was screaming at him at the fight. Everyone was shouting at him. Promoters <laughs> were tearing him apart. <laughs> you, can, you can imagine what Rachel was doing. I, I, I already know. I, got, yeah. I know Rachel exactly. well. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> she said music. a lot of words <laughs> that rhyme with truck. Uh-huh. And, and the so word, when he came yeah. to me, I was just put in the position where I said to myself, Right now, I'm like, I want, who am I representing right now? And how do I want to represent? Yeah. So when he came and he apologized and I'm in my fight outfit, like I'm supposed to be walking out. He said, I'm sorry and stuff. I talked back to him. I told him, have a safe trip back home. It's all good. What happened, happened. You know, misunderstandings happen, all that stuff, because what's going to happen tomorrow? He's going to wake up, be the same person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wake up, be the same person. The situation isn't going to change. He's going to read the rules on... next time, though. That's he he, he got to yeah, stop, exactly. he gotta stop <laughs> listening to Snoop Dogg before he exactly. come out the fight. <laughs> but a situation like that, we just need to keep in mind whenever anything bad happens in life or it doesn't go as planned, you being upset or angry about it for a long time won't change the result. Mm-hmm. But what will change the result is how you look at it, your perspective. Looking at the cup half full, that's the most important thing because that's what's going to carry you on to the next steps and always know that there's something better in store because right now I'm on the Usyk Joshua Cup part Crazy. two. So it's like, <laughs> you know. Bananas. Like you're, okay, so your pro debut is in a 40,000-seater <sighs> along with everyone in the world tuning in. The world media. Um, yeah. And uh, 
what, this you this it, your amazing. story couldn't have been written any better. You should thank your uh, your opponent. Thank for you taking, to the edible. <laughs> thank you, edible guy. <laughs> we're, I don't know which camera we're looking know, at. Thank you, thank you, edible yeah, guy. All right, yeah, so but, we're gonna have to wrap soon. But uh, I have a segment, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna edit this out. Mm-hmm. Wait, I have part. one real important question before you do that. Yeah. So when we come to Jeddah, <laughs> yeah. What should we order to eat? Because I like to eat. So what <laughs> food should we be ordering or what are you going to be having once the fight is done? What's the celebratory dinner looking like? Educate us on food, please. All right. Well, there are two things that I'm going to tell you about. One is rice. And if you like lamb or if you like chicken, do. Ch- chicken. you're going to take rice with lamb or chicken. It's called kepsa. Kepsa. It's in Saudi Arabia. You mm. just go ask for kepsa. You go ask for Jerish, they're going to make you the best stuff you're ever going to have. And the second thing, and you're going to be surprised about this one because it exists in America. But He's going to say I'm a going burrito. Straight- I was, he's got some McDonald's. <laughs> a taco or something like no, that. No, no, but I'm, I'm going straight to fat salads. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I love that. I'm not, I know exactly. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say Roscoe's or something. <laughs> all right, fat boy. He said, I'm going to go to that fat so salad. funny. And I'm putting all those 20 pounds yeah, right there. <laughs> right there. Right. Okay, so I have a segment called Off the Cuff. This will Since be- you are, you fight at 140, am I correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. my debut is 140, but eventually 135 is where we plan on kicking it off. Oh, you're oh. going to go down. Oh, yeah. you are. Yeah. Okay, so those are, we. as you heard us, we mentioned uh, uh, Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. So eventually, th- those are the people in your division. So I'm going to run through the guys in the 140 division, since you are going to be um, pro debuting at this. The first word that comes out of your mouth, don't think, just say. All right? There's no wrong answers. Josh Taylor, quick. Uh, You're you thinking. Know, <laughs> this is a safe space. The dream. The dream. Regis Progre. Overrated. Jose Ramirez. Good. Jose Cepeda. Underrated. Hugely underrated. Jack Catterall. Good. Sabriel Matias. Underrated. Arnold Barbosa. Good. I'm not going to even, I don't even know how to say his first name. Ergashev. Who? Sh- 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 Shohan from, he's, he's from Uzbekistan. Shohan Ergashev. Where well, if he's from Uzbekistan and I'm saying who, then it's underrated. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Batir Ahmedov. Underrated. Gary Antoine Russell. Very good. Sandor Martin. Underrated. Ziad Al Mayouf. The best one out of all of them. <laughs> Superman. All right, I'm gonna kind of uh, we're gonna flirt Superhero. with we're gonna Superman. flirt with the idea. Ryan Garcia. Strong. And Tank Davis. The best. Oh, okay. Well, honestly, th- honestly. Right now, Tank Davis at 140. Yeah. He, he's the best. One, 140 and 135. Okay, so best. you heard us talk about Ryan and Tank. If they would, would Ryan do all right at 140 and Tank at one, uh, 140? Because Floyd wants it at 135. I mean, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like Tank beats Ryan at 135 and 140. That's just how I see it happening. Tank. You cannot you cannot prepare for an awkward fighter and Tank is very explosive mm-hmm. and he, his gazelle punches are just gazelle you know they punches. come out of nowhere and I feel like it's very hard to prepare for that because not too many people have that yeah. not too many people have that uh, switching from southpaw to orthodox and the gazelle punches and just that power um, I mean we saw Ryan Garcia and how he how he fought with uh, what was his name fortuna uh, javier yeah. fortuna his recent the knockdown the knockdown he took was against uh, 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 oh oh campbell luke campbell mm. yeah campbell i was gonna say callum smith because i'm in camp with him yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah luke campbell we saw that he took a left hand from luke campbell and he dropped but i mean tank's left hand is, is not to uh, be compared with luke Campbell. so Absolutely. you never know 
you know so it's boxing. at the end of the day it's a yeah it's boxing and ryan garcia is very good tank davis is very good but in my opinion tank davis is is the best right now it's a very good fight it's a win for the fans and i'm looking forward to seeing it i believe it will happen at any weight you know they're just right now they're selling it but it will it will happen and and when it happens it's going to be a very very good fight i i really i really like what ryan garcia has persevered through and that's what makes him dangerous what like i said the way you are as a human is the way you are as an athlete and they both persevered from very very tough stuff that's why the fight is a good fight I like that. I like that perspective. No one ever talks about that, how they have shared uh, shared history, not with each other, of just overcome adversity and where they come from. Yeah. There, so, Man, we're going to have to wrap up soon. Okay, well, I have to ask you very, very, very quick predictions. You love women's boxing. Michaela Mayer versus Alicia Baumgartner. Michaela Mayer, yeah. Okay, you already <laughs> That was easy. And um, Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall. I see Clarissa Shields winning winning with flying colors honestly okay that's that's just how i see it and the, she's built very different and she's coming for it all and i really hope if anyone in saudi arabia is hearing this right now i really hope clarissa shields is brought to saudi arabia soon because if anyone's going to show that women could fight it's her i love that we're going to tag Clarissa I Shields. Love, That's amazing. We're about to hype that up. I right? love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Because um, you know what? She, Clarissa needs to, we have to keep giving her her roses. It's just, she uh, gets, yes. it, it, it's time and people just keep, they don't acknowledge that, but thank you. Mm -hmm. um, two more, Canelo versus Triple G3. Canelo only because Triple G is now too old. I, I thought Triple G won the first fight, but right now Canelo is going to win that fight, especially coming out what he just came out of. He's coming way more hungry than he was. Mm -hmm. Triple G should have called it a day a long time ago. And then lastly, you got to give us one, Usyk versus Joshua too. Oh man, you're, you're, you're putting me in a very bad situation right now. <laughs> okay, do you think since now Robert Garcia is in the corner, can Joshua learn a different style? Because Usyk is just gonna box his head off again, again. So exact, yeah. So look, what what I can say is Usyk will box box him out. He will keep meeting him with that left hand that Joshua kept eating the first fight way too many times because Usyk throws it with a an amazing angle, but let's not forget that Robert Garcia is very experienced in yeah. training aggressive fighters, mm -hmm. and he's very experienced in training that aggressive push forward st push forward style. So we could see a different Joshua, and we will see a different Joshua because I will say it again: Joshua has pushed through so much, and he's been in that position before, and he's come back stronger. He's come back hungrier. I thought Joshua was holding back. The first fight right now his back's against the wall yeah. and like i said uh i feel like joshua is the same things the same way that i'd like to think is you like that pressure you like that feeling where your back's against the wall the only way you have is going forward and that's the only way he has right now so we'll see what happens i really look up to joshua as an athlete but Usyk was the better boxer in the first fight and i believe he will be the better boxer in the second fight but will he be the better fighter? You know, will he be the smarter fighter? Um, everyone that uh, is going to want to watch this fight, August twentieth. It is a it is a grudge Massive. match. Yeah, and uh, looking for all the belts, all of them, all of the marbles. Uh, Usyk versus Joshua two, August twentieth, uh, in Jeddah Superdome in Saudi Arabia. And also make sure you guys catch Ziad Al Mayouf. Zizo, <laughs> yes. we're going to see you stick that Perfect. jab and uh, take it to him. And we can't wait to see how your pro debut comes out. Good luck to you. Can I just say before I go, I want to say thank you for having me and thank you for giving me this opportunity. I mean, there is no getting used to this for a fighter like me coming from where I came from. There is no getting used to it. Every time I do an interview like this, it's a dream come true. Oh. And thank you for having the energy that's on the show that just keeps every fighter alive and Aww. thank you for representing women the way you do thank i hope you. so many people and i'm sure so many people look up to you and as they should so thank you for the energy 
thank you for the opportunity and I'll see you in Jeddah. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, thank so you much. Ziad. And best of luck and stay in good health. All thank right. You. Well, thank you. And Jay. My little bookend. What that a- was amazing. I feel inspired because how many opportunities do you get to, to talk to people who literally sit in the crosshairs of history? Yeah. Because, you know, we're here in our country. Our history is, yeah. you know, the founding, uh, you know, well, let me not get on that. I'm know. black. But, <laughs> uh, but to watch history unfold before our very very eyes is incredible it's amazing and i'm i feel we're very privileged to be able to do this i'm very excited and i want to see all his um, i mean the fact that he how he spoke about women's boxing and it was so proud Mm -hmm. and i'm like good you know what i love that and just even knowing that he is writing the history it's amazing for for their for his country for his people for his family this is it's incredible and it's um i am just honored to be able to watch me right we get front row seats to watch front row and then we're going to go to Jeddah and eat kepsa and (laughs) and rice i don't remember how to say the other word but we're gonna eat it i'm gonna eat it for sure there's fat sales i bet you there's a roscoe's i'm gonna eat that (laughs) and fat (laughs) sales oh jay well this was a great one in the can i'm not sure exactly what camera i'm supposed to be looking at so forgive us if we look at a little like alex am i looking at the middle camera Yes. We'll find out. We we'll find out. out. We'll find out. I mean, we'll figure Y'all it out. Us. But as you guys know, this is our first episode in the new studio. So if there's some technical difficulties, if you see us looking up, looking around, we are we're trying to figure out which camera to look at. <laughs> <laughs> But again, um, make sure you guys lo- like, share, subscribe all of our videos on YouTube. We have TikTok, Instagram, everything. We're finally monetized. Woo! Woo! Remember, we were supposed to have we're do, we're supposed to do something special. But I know we're gonna do something special. We'll do something special, all right, y'all. Um, and then also we have some merch. Yes, we, we do. We got some merch for the lucky first X amount of people. Yes, you'll get the um, autographed merch from both of us. Mm-hmm. But again, Gianda, thank you again. Beautiful new studio. We got it. We We got it. Our our, our shared brain. Look at this. I know. All right. Well, again, I'm Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys.